Um, but then there's other places where it can be used, but it doesn't really save you much time unless if you, again, just menu it perfectly and, you know, all that stuff. Oh, yeah, that's what I was hoping would come out of it. Uh, where you can somehow, like, you know, really skip stuff. There's actually already a thing where you can skip uh, the lab. Uh, two different ways. One that's on the PAL version of the game on the PS2. And the other is a multi-segment strat only. Um, because for some reason it only works if you load in a save file. Which there's a really, really fancy way of, After the end of World War II, you know, somehow clipping the split into two. through the, the west. first set of this stairs. The of the era I think the there's a whole War. YouTube vid on it uh, by Apel. Because uh, again, I mean, Jack? he just finds these things. Like, it's what he does. I mean, you know, he runs games, but he also just hunts for glitches or just things like that. It's the things that he's found out on what you could do are just absolutely nuts. You know, some that are just like, oh, hey, did you know you could do this? And then it's, oh, yeah, did you know you could do this and also save time? And that's where, you know, ears start to perk up. It's like, oh, really? You know, tell me more about this thing you discovered, Mr. Apel, Glitch Hunter. Um, there's also a pain skip, which I don't remember if Apel found that one too. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't work on this difficulty or extreme because you need at least two faint death pills to do it. Um, like you, you use the the faint death pill to skip over one trigger line, and then you use a second one to skip another. And you can basically skip the pain fight entirely and just swim to the other side. Um, but it only seems beneficial to do it on, like, like mid-difficulties. Because, um, again, on very easy, it's not really worth it. Because uh, you can just end the fight faster with the easy gun than it is to, like, you know, do the skip. Uh, for, like, normal and above, um, that's where I think it's useful. And you have plenty of faint death pills to use, too. Uh, extreme and Euro would be really nice if you could, but again, you need at least two. Because, like, you could do the one, but then you'll still, like, trigger a cutscene. So, like, you can't actually skip the fight. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy, like, how many little things you can do in this game. Or even just, like, these outright, like, big skips. Huh? <clears throat> what do you do for the boss? Um, there's actually a stun loop we do. Yeah, so like you can't really skip the fight. Come in, HQ. As far as I know. This is HQ. Um, but there's a loop you can do to really You know, not only beat her fast, but it, it minimizes the difficulty of how hard that fight really is. Because when that fight goes out of control, it, it's a really, really frustrating fight. You know, and you just lose, like, boatloads of minutes to her. What about the end? Well, once I get back there, I'll, I'll gladly demonstrate. Uh, because that has also changed over time. Over what used to be just creating a smoke screen. And then just running all the way around sneak up on the end and then start six spray looping them there's a new way of doing it um which will save you a lot of time uh, but it does put you at greater risk for the fury because of your hp which honestly it's whether if you're at full hp or barely at zero 
I, I still feel like the minute you get hit by the fury of something, you should assume that the fight has already gone wrong. Well, you don't want to kill him outside of the the docks because it takes too long to get the SVD to actually kill him with it. And secondly, if we're going for Foxhound strats, which I am, then that's going to disqualify you for that. But yeah, we do actually fight him. Yeah, it's like you can't... I mean, you can SVD him. I'm not saying you can't. Um, but it just won't be a fox on run if you do. And you can't do the, you know, the system clock cheese either, because you would have to load in a save to, to do that. Which, again, all runs are single segment. Well, at least runs that, like, get submitted to the, the leaderboards are single segment. Um, but, however, that doesn't mean, like, you know, multi-segment is, like, irrelevant. Because there's actually some strats that get applied into single-segment that were found by people just, tra like, trying them as multi-segment. Um, for example, there's a different way to do Ocelot Unit, which was from a multi-segment run. I believe it was by Hikari. Um, might be mistaken. He had, like, this really crazy way of doing Ocelot Unit that is incredibly risky, but it's faster if you do it right. And there's also a multi-segment Rykov of, you know, trying to capture him and lead him into the locker room rather than, you know, knocking him out where he is and then just dragging him over. Uh, what does SS and LT mean? Well, SS just stands for single segment. And then LT is for loading trick. Um, which indicates um, the run has been, like, loaded up to a certain point. I exit out. You know, I don't reset the game or soft reset, you know, the, or just reset the console either. And what that does is, on the PS3, when you play from the very beginning up to a cutoff point, which is the cell in Grizzly Grad when you're captured... Everything that you had loaded up to that point is in, like, the console's RAM. So the next time you start a new run, without resetting anything, you know, cutscenes, codecs, loads are faster. And you only do it up to a certain point, so you load everything you need. Um, otherwise, if you cross a threshold throughout the game, um, it'll actually reset your memory cache. So you can't just you know, play the whole game and then, like, start it over from scratch and then expect, like, the whole thing to be faster. Which would be nuts if it did that. Oh, you're talking about the final shootout with Ocelot? It's always the left revolver that's loaded. And for the run, you always go for that one so you could fire off the round first because Ocelot takes forever to go through his. Move. What? Huh? Oh. Used, but still a good Ocelot unit. But yeah, loading trick is only a thing you have to 
you know, worry about on the PS3. Since it's the only one that actually has something like that. You know, because, like, you can run this on X360, X1. Um, supposedly on X Series S and X, there's a weird crash when you get to bike segment. Which is a real damn shame because... You know, that would have been interesting to, like, try running it on that if I ever get that one day. Same with the PS5. Um, but with X1, I believe it's just pretty much consistent loads. Like, you don't have to, like, do loading trick or anything. Uh, which, to my understanding... The PS3 is only faster when you're on Loading Trick. But you can still play competitively, whether if you're using it or not. But for me, you know, since my PS3 is so old, I kind of need to have Loading Trick on in order to, like, produce a fast time uh, that's, like, somewhat realistic to get. You know, otherwise the loads alone will just be enough to just, you know, not get it. going to get caught again. like it. roll again. in time because I was about to say I threw that first smoke a little bit late Man, 
look at that. Big gold. That's probably the best one I've done today. Way to lab. So normally here is where you could just kill the end early, but instead, we're going to injure him by blowing up all the barrels, which part of that damage is going to carry over when we meet him later. And at the same time, it just clears out all the guards except for that one. So even though it's a, you know, non-lethal run, even though his HP damage was, you know, roughly like a third, what's going to happen is he'll regenerate part of that HP, but it'll cost him part of his stamina doing it. So that's really the benefit you're getting, because he'll get both HP and stamina loss when you meet up with him later. And that box is at it again. It's like, not so fast, Strimmer. Is it a scientist? Huh? Huh? What do you think you're doing? I'm gonna go with that. It's a box man disguised as a scientist. What? 
It's everybody yelling at me. <laughs> it's like, just leave me be. It's a box of scientists. There you go. What's up, Snow Mike? <laughs> Oh shit. Just my Okay, I wasn't sure how that was gonna play out. Hey. It's like, yeah, it was just some other scientist running around with a a bandana on that just bumped into him and left. Huh? <gasps> Watch how fast this poison works. Wow, damn! He wasn't dead after all! Well, somebody's dying, but it's gonna be you. And there have been days where I can just, you know, get that itch to just run through these rooms with the Patriot on. Just, you know, blast these guys to just make things easier. If Goid wasn't a thing, I, I totally would. You know, like, after failing to get, like, a nice, like, you know, fast run... You know, no alerts. And if I just finally snap, just bust out the Patriot. Huh? The enemy's here. A speed run. That it is.
and just like that, he reappears. I can't see. Freeze. Huh? Uh, did you? You know, that punch is really the best part. <laughs> as mean as it looks, it's still the best part. But yeah, that is the new hybrid end loop strat. Well, I mean, it's not new, like, within, like, you know, like the past month or anything. It's been done for a while now, but... What you used to do for the end was, at the very beginning, you would throw a smoke to just kind of cover um, part of your way to exit the area. And you still keep the end up at that cliff where he starts. And then you would just run through the, the, the northern forest, go all the way around, and then you'll just end up right behind where he's still sitting. And then you would do like that, you know, smoke, sig spray, stun, sig spray. But the better way about doing it this way is you make him come to you instead of you go after him. And you don't have to go through like two loading zones plus having to like move all the way around so it's less movement intensive. And you're still utilizing a SIG spray stun smoke loop that the old strat used to do. And part of what makes that possible is the fact that when you start off by shooting at him, you get him to get up and leave, and I punch, punch, kick up at that tree six times, which is meant to buy you enough time for him to leave the zone completely. And you throw a smoke to cover your approach as you make noise with the Patriot, because when the end leaves and you make noise like shooting off your gun, throwing a grenade, or if you detonate the TNT, it's going to make him come back. Because he's reacting to the the noise you're making and so by making the noise at that tree where i'm at we're manipulating him to spawn back right at that corner where i throw that stun so it's all planned in him being there it's a mouthful but it, it saves a lot of time Cue the stomach. Way to go, Snake.
Yeah, he was just seeing things. Because it's perfectly normal to find a moving cardboard box out here. Mountain 3 I was looking for all day. Second roll was a uh, bit monk ass. Well, don't question it, just keep going. Am I ready for this? Are you ready for this? Let's go. Finally a good fight. Jeez. Man, we were ready today. I mean, it's just a box, right? Excuse me, I need to borrow your outfit.
All right, who's ready to go for a box glide? works on that one because you can see how there's windows there and same with the sky bridge here you know because like i said it doesn't work on solid walls for whatever reason but anything that has railings or in this case like the windows that's when the box glide seems to like you know work as it sh you know it's supposed to totally as intended but shout outs to apel for finding that box glide glitch Tell me! Stop it! Who have you been talking to? He doesn't know what you're talking about. You'd better start talking. Please, stop this! Who is Khrushchev's lapdog? How can you do this to him? I know you gave the data to someone. I never do you. that. <laughs> I guess he's dead. <laughs> I mean, it really is. Same with MGS2. The box is probably one of the best things you could ever have on the mission. Now then. More entertaining than he was. But first, let's take a look at your body, shall we? What a beautiful body you have, like a newborn baby. <laughs> but not for long. Well, then, let's get started. <laughs> What is your target? <laughs> is it the Shagohad? Yeah, in a very scary way, Zoractor. Or, or maybe it's the legacy. What's my target? I just want a PB, dude. Answer me. Who is helping you? Who let you in here? I mean, your guards seem to let me in. You're a tough one. But even you must have your limits. I am a patient man. I mean, am I wrong? The guards just saluted me and said, Oh, yep, go, go right ahead. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven. Huh? Um, what's wrong? Are you okay? Oh, jeez. Did you throw up? What did he mean by this? Oh, when he's making this comment about Snake's body? Well, fun fact, when he actually says that, what he's doing is he's actually reading off your medical history. So, like, if you were injured a lot prior to getting captured, the line that he'll say will differ. Um, so, like, for now, since I haven't been injured as bad, he'll say the, oh, what a beautiful body you have, like a newborn baby. But if you get injured a lot, and then you get to that cutscene again, he'll say something like, oh, looks like you've seen your fair share of battles. You know, which is indicating, you know, like the amount of injuries you've sustained. I, I don't remember what the exact amount is. Like, it, it. I think it's something to do with, like, you have to have, like, a certain amount of, like, life bar damage, I think. Or just injuries. Um, sometimes, I don't know if, like, continues add to that. It's a lot. Yeah, I, I don't remember what the exact amount is. The only time I even remember was when I was just playing this casually, you know, back on the PS2. Huh? Oh, 
You know, Vulgan must have a lot of patience, you know, especially with these guards. <laughs> it's like, what's wrong? Oh, he must be around here somewhere. It's like, yeah, check the smog of smoke that just appeared out of nowhere. Or the fact that the dog was barking and then all of a sudden it's not. It's like he got all the warning signs there and the guards just like... <laughs> I mean, if I had to put up with that day in and day out, I mean, you better have a lot of patience. Yeah, it definitely threw me... It threw me off when I was, you know, playing it for the first time. Especially when in my playthroughs there was probably, I don't know... A few hundred... Kills. <laughs> or at least it felt like it. And trying to go through it, you know, traditionally was pretty miserable. But, you know, he has a weakness. And it's, uh, the revival pill. Bonking on those trees all day. Oh yeah, when I first saw that in a run, I was actually relieved uh, for the sorrow because even if you didn't kill anybody, you know, you still have to evade the ghosts of, you know, the pain, the fear, the end, and the fury. Even though, technically, I didn't kill them, but they're just there anyway. And, you know, Sorrow's, like, you know, spirit wave attacks, whatever you call it. I mean, those are annoying to have to dodge. And so when I saw that, it's like, yeah, you just die at the very beginning, revive pill out, and that's it. It's like, wow. That, that saves you a lot of agony of just, you know, having to, like, go through that. And, yeah, the, the new end strategy is really insane it's difficult to learn but it's easy to replicate like once you've actually done it a few times correctly you know like it's it's really about understanding like the order of operations with you know how to start the fight how to buy yourself time you know setting up the smoke and then intermixing in the you know the six spray smoke six spray stun and then six spray twice so you can break him out of his hitbox cooldown. And then once you understand the steps and actually get the muscle memory to do it, then it doesn't feel like as difficult of a fight to execute. But, you know, mistakes do happen, and that's where you have to get creative. Um, should the need arise through, you know, back the fight up somehow. Bro, strat, just die. I mean, that, that, that's really all it takes to beat the sorrow. Bye. 
relax. Jeez. I mean, I almost missed my shot because of that. Meanwhile, the guards are just running around in a panic while the the uh, maintenance the maintenance guys in there are just like, eh, it's just another day. Another fun fact, uh, despite what you saw, Volgan doesn't actually die, so it won't count as a kill no matter what you do to him. But you do lose the Cold War camo, given you don't have it already. You know, so like doing it non-lethally all the way through will get you the Cold War camo, which is actually not that bad. I just prefer to use the sneaking suit for everything, um, including the spike segment, since it's really good for that and, you know, endgame. But if you just outright SVD Volgan like I just did, I mean, since he doesn't technically die per the story, it won't actually count as a, uh, a kill against you in the score uh, screen, which is something I didn't know for the longest time. You know, because I always figured, you know, whatever I did is whatever would count. You know, meaning if I do non-lethal, then that's what it should be. Our shelter.
I didn't hit the Kuroton. All I'll say is, thank goodness for the snaking suit. It cuts damage in half, uh, damage taken. Uh, except it will not protect you from burns. Um, and while it will minimize injuries, it won't make you immune to injuries either. But overall, it's a really good camo for segments like this where you're expected to take some damage. Um, alternatively, you can use the Oscam camo, which is more common. Um, it's less menu intensive. You just select new game and then select uh, I'm Phantom Mill, you're solid three, and you're just given that at the very beginning. Uh, but I go with the sneaking suit because I feel like it's the one thing I can menu in as I'm menuing everything else. And I can use this camo throughout the rest of the game. And it does really provide a lot of good damage protection. Uh, not just for this section specifically, but for the those flying things later. Those things suck. You got mad after you headshot Volga with a sniper, he don't die. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I, I think I was wasting some of my ammo. I planted four C3 charges. Three more bombs. Two more left. Only one more left. The Shackle Hunt's not here yet. Big one! Steady. 
take us behind those rocks. Moving behind the rocks. Keep going. You're good. You're good. You're good. And stop. Don't worry, Captain. We'll buff out those scratches. <laughs> It's like, yep, you keep her going. <laughs> You're good. Eva, you mind? Oh, never mind. She's she's already going. bad Eva RNG all the time. It's probably the worst part of doing this fight all together is Eva's driving RNG. I can't move! I mean, when you skip all the cutscenes and codex, it, it really is. Time, let's go. Oh, and I did get that guy.
Oh, that's hot. Ah, you mind getting off of me? Yeah, that mountain range was like, yep, get wrecked. <laughs> Man, all that technology they don't know how to break. distance there. Get that jump. Did you see that bike? <laughs> uh, let me have some more. She's lucky just to get that one. Eva's true objective, get the Philosopher's Legacy. Oh, dude, that's not it. It was always about the noodles.
All right, just one more area with guards and one last fight. See that, Eva. Down to this. Let's see what you're made of. Excellent. It's not good. You've gotten stronger. Yeah, so I meant to, you know, throw it overhand, not under. So the loop got broken, but I can still try to, you know, end this fight fast. That's such a bad way to lose time, but it is Fox on all the way through, though. And it's future time save if I just don't screw up the last uh, part of the loop. Take this. Keep it safe. Second Patriot what Snake. Think of it. Dual wheel patriots. You're a wonderful man. Kill me. 
kill me now. Do it. There's only room for one boss and one snake. Now we wait. But yeah, as far as the like the final duel, it's always the left revolver with the loaded bullet. You know, and again, it took speedrunning to figure that out. You know, because, like, I always tried to, like, watch the cutscene, you know, when he's juggling the three revolvers around. I would try to, like, really, you know, you know, pinpoint which one had it. And I always guessed it wrong. Because, <laughs> like, there's always the one part of the juggle that you can't really tell which way he moved it. Or which one of the revolvers it is. But we're muting way to fall because of copyright and all that nonsense. Uh, plus it's going to get blocked on YouTube. Which, if this time is what I think it's going to be. This one's definitely going on YouTube. Where is that song I like to play? Ah, there you are. Ring. Yep, good old DMCA. So I just play this song in its place until the end part of the credits where I unmute the game again. But yeah, this was a hell of a run. I mean, started off pretty basic. Saved time on Ocelot, but lost time to Bolshaya because I played it safe. Uh, I mean, not the end of the world. Saved a lot of time on the pain. Saved it with Warehouse and Forest on the end. Uh, let's see, then Fury, thank God he gave me a good fight. I can't tell you how many runs I've lost the Foxhound rank, or just the run in, in general to him. And then, without looking it up, without practicing, it just sort of clicked into place how I was supposed to do the Shagahog loop, so I actually think I did it for once. There's a reason why it's called Learn the Loop, and that's because I lose so much time to that fight because I just never learned it. Until I think I just improvised one today. Let's see, phase two, same thing, and then... I was pretty much good up until the last fight. You know, what went wrong was when I threw the second stun, Snake underhanded it, which is not going to make it go up as high, and then it fell and hit her, which will break the loop that you're trying to start. So what you're meant to do is counter CQC, shoot two moles and bullets into her head, CQC throw her down, throw a stun overhead, which it'll give her time to get up and then blind her, which then you fire two more Mosins, throw her down again, throw a second stun, and then by this point, you can't throw a third one because it only works so many times. And it's by then, normally after the second stun goes off, you would do two more shots, throw her down, followed by a third of the head. 
roll away once, which will get her to stand up and then charge you a second time, counter CQC, and then just go one, two, CQC slam for like the final hit. Now, if you were short because you hit her arm with one of the Mosins, then yeah, you may need to like add in like another shot or so. But because I did the underhand, I had to kind of, you know, improvise a way to save it without her killing me. Think she, thankfully, she didn't. But yeah, I'm, I'm really happy how this run went up until the last fight. I may have it. Oh, the fox on ring? Absolutely. I mean, without a shadow of doubt, it's just the time that it's what I'm curious about. up, Haver? We wait again. Yes, Grozny Grad and the Granin Research Facility have both been wiped out without a trace. I understand, sir, but they were necessary sacrifices. Yes, the CIA has taken care of the boss themselves. I believe the White House will be satisfied. Khrushchev is finished. Your time has finally arrived. Yes, the American president is relying on us to keep a lid on the whole affair. We've got him by the balls. It should make a valuable trump card in future negotiations. Yes, Chief Director, of course. I'll keep the KGB informed. Yes, it's me. The boss has accomplished her mission. The philosopher's legacy is now safely with us, in America's hands. With this money, yes, the philosophers can finally be revived. 
The film we handed the Chinese was a fake. <laughs> Peking must be in an uproar right about now. I'm afraid so. Only half the money has made it back to the United States. The KGB must still have part of the legacy. Yes, the weapon has been reduced to ashes. That's right. Grozny Grad has been obliterated by the Davy Crockett we brought in as well. Yes, that was the boss's work too. Speaking of which, I've obtained something from Granin that you might find interesting. It's a revolutionary new nuclear attack system. Perhaps it might just come in handy someday. Yes, we have John, I mean Snake, to thank for that. Khrushchev believed it as well. Yes, they bought our story. I don't think they'll be making a fuss. The secondary alert has been lifted as well. And the Soviets still haven't discovered my true identity. They have no idea that I've been triple crossing them. No idea. I will continue my activities as a contact for the new government. Yes, it appears that no one knew that I was Adam. Of course. I am always at the CIA's disposal, Mr. Director. Man, dropping them bombs. All right, final time. A 122.11 with the rank. That is, wow, that's like over a minute improvement over what was like the 12321 that I got not too long ago. And yeah, that's that's going to get uploaded cuz the run on the board for me is really old. And for once I actually got a run to go all the way through without all this like stupid BS. It's like, "Up, oh, Fury killed the run again. Up, oh, got caught in warehouse or Bolshaya." You know, all these other areas where it just, you know, slightest mistake. But, dude, that, that is the best run that I have done to date. Just putting that out there. It has been... It's been a lot of attempts to get something this good. And I'm glad that it finally happened again. So, it's going right on the YouTube. Got a run to, got a run to update.